Business Matchmaker TV channel. Really, really proud to introduce my guest today, Parveen Ashraf, aka the Spice Queen. Now, you may have seen her, ITV chef who's dreamed of having her own cooking show. Um, and after a promise to her dear late mother, she realized her dream and got to teach the nation how to cook authentic Indian food. Parveen is an author, a columnist, a TV chef, a businesswoman and entrepreneur. So many roles in life, but you know the one role that she is so proud of and most proud of being a wife and a mother to three adult children. You don't look old enough, but adult children, adult children. So welcome, Parveen. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I was listening to my introduction and makes me sound like superwoman but I'm not because it's just like all these things I've done in my life to describe me but I'm probably just like any other businesswoman really just juggling lots of balls in the air. Absolutely but I think you're right it, it does sound like superwoman because it is really hard on so many levels to actually keep home life going, family life going, your business is going, you're such a busy woman so in your intro we talked about your mum, your dear mum so please elaborate. How much of an influence has your mum had on your life? Oh, gosh, quite a solemn question to start with. Um, yeah. When my mother was alive, I never knew how much she was influencing me or inspiring me. And I think like any other mum, and we've all got mums and I've got daughter and you've got a daughter, there's always that battle of wills. There's a culture gap, there's a generation gap. But in hindsight, which is a wonderful thing and nobody has it, in <laughs> hindsight, you know, it was that mum was teaching me to be the best version of myself. And she was mm. fighting that I was going to dream too big and fall, which I did. I fell a lot of times. Um, but I hit 15. Mum got really poorly and I went to see her at the hospital. And for the first time in my life, I saw pride in her eyes. And she was very ill and, and life support and all the machines around her. And she just wanted to know what was happening with my business. And I said, Mum, I'm going to give up. Um, and she said, no, you're not going to give up. And we had a bit of argument on her bed. And she said, keep <laughs> going. You know, yeah. you, you've got this. But in all my years of catering and chefing and doing dinner parties, Mum really, really, really never really got what I did. She didn't want her daughter going out to um serving people alcohol and champagne, driving back at 4 a.m., um, yeah. in the whole day's catering. She worried for me, and I realised it was her worry of wanting to keep me safe. But yeah. on her deathbed, and it was her deathbed, unbeknown to me at the time, I think mum had pure clarity. And what yeah. she left me with was powerful words to inspire me. And had I not promised... I definitely would have given up. I didn't feel good enough. I didn't think I had the I had the strength to be in the world that I wanted to be in. But my mom just gave me that little push and said, "You've got this, Parveen. Do not give up until you follow your dreams." So then I did promise her, and of course, that was the last conversation we had. Apart from get your hands off my strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us what what's the strawberry story? Well, then? I, I, I left <laughs> And I said, and I said, good night, mum. And I kissed her good night. And I said, oh, can I make a strawberry? And she yeah. said, my get your hands off my strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Food was a thing. And she said, don't give up. You've got this out of my seven children. You are the strongest. And mm -hmm. I never thought the words would mean anything. But again, in hindsight, mum just inspired me to go forward six weeks after she passed. I got the book deal. A year after she passed, I got the TV show. Both were dedicated to my mother. And still, even today, talking to you, I find it quite difficult. Um, she was a wonderful woman, and and she inspired me. So in life, she was my biggest critic. But in death, she became the inspiration I needed to go forward. And I think if she was here today, she'd be your biggest fan, actually. I think she'd be so proud. Uh, and when you talk about strength, resilience, and all the things that we go through, it's quite clear where you've got that from, to Why me, anyway. That? <laughs> but it is, it's, it's quite clear where that's come from. Um, what a wonderful woman. And actually, to have that conversation with her, she gave her blessing, which I think is beautiful. She give did give her blessing. And that strength, because 
look at what's happened now. So let, let's fast forward to today and how much have you achieved? Yeah, um, yes, definitely. Um, the, the biggest thing was um, after being in business for 10 years and shopping and demonstrating and selling barges on street corners and touting my ways to everybody, anybody that would listen to me, um, I just wasn't really getting anywhere. And when I got the book deal, I think after publishing the book, I became an author. And I think after becoming an author, that gave me, number one, the confidence the, yeah. and the gravitas of going forward. And suddenly people saw me as an expert in my field because I was an author. Um, and it changed my life, changed after the cookbook, which was dedicated to my mother. So, yeah, that was when yeah. things hugely changed for me. Wow. And your cookbook is beautiful. And I know from having conversations with you, many conversations with you, that even her scarf is in, it's really a personal book. And I think that's what's so wonderful about it. it it's it really like it's beautiful. It, it's absolutely stunning. Um, and your strengths, and we'll, we will move on. So we, I don't want you sort of being upset, but I think it's really no, important no, that, that you recognise your strengths. So absolutely. Look, it, it's <laughs> wonderful. How many chefs do you know? That will style a carrot halva on her mother's shawl but that's the creativity that i had inside of me and that was always there Viola. i was always a creative person at school i did a level art and computer science and at school they said either you had to be a secretary or a nurse doing computer science and art didn't really go together however we all know now that designing on on computers is the way to go so i didn't realize that my art and design would come in handy but it certainly did when i got to style the food in my cookbook and it's it's the whole creative package though as well isn't it from from being very creative with your food as well very creative uh, yeah i think um, we both have grown up with, with with asian indian cuisine and it wasn't known indian food is not synonymous with style or elegance it really isn't until the michelin star chefs come along the likes of atal kutch and vivek singh um yeah. but for the average a, average lay person who has an indian meal or a curry out it's not synonymous with elegance and style. So I wanted to show the book, the images of the food, beautiful images of the food of how it would look. And I cooked every single dish from my cookbook, which took three whole weeks. But the reason it worked is my mum always gave me this whole tip. And she said, what we put in there? And I said, I put cumin, garam masala, I put this. She went, have you added love? I said, mum, people can't taste the love. Uh, but they can. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a really key element. So I've watched your show. I thought your show was fantastic. It's what what really sort of stood out for me and my family, actually, we're all big fans, is, is how authentic you came across on the TV as well. And knowing you and knowing you quite well now, it's no different in real life. You portrayed yourself so beautifully on TV that what we saw is who you are. And I think today that's actually quite hard for a lot of people because being authentic is really, really important and actually being yourself, being natural. And I think that's one of your key strengths. It's It just really, really sings when you're on TV. You've got that presence, it shines. And when you talk about your mom saying you've got to have love in your food, I think that comes across as well because you, you're really passionate about what you do. I, do, so, I am. I am. So, I dinner in my house, haven't you? Yes, I have. It was gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. And did you taste the love? I did. I did. I felt the love and the warmth from the minute I walked through the door. And I think that's really important as well, because actually that's you. That that that's who you are, you know, who what you stand for, your husband as well. It was very, very evident. And then when the food was served. You could just tell because everything was really tasty. So, you know, I cook quite a lot of Indian food as well. And it's really important that you kind of get each step right. And everything has to be right in it for you to move on to the next stage. Or even we're all quite good at multitasking, making three or four dishes at a time. Yeah. But actually, each one gets the right care and attention that it needs. And that was definitely there. That, that The love was definitely yeah I thought it was really important and it was just really I think it summed up from having watched you on the tv as well that you do walk your talk I do walk my talk is that new thing talk I talk my walk yeah I do Viola and what was evident to me is after having 
the script written and the recipes have to be cooked and they have to be filmed, they have to be tested. It's a lot of work behind the scenes. But what was evident to me is if I didn't have a passion for cooking, cooking for 12, 14 hours with a camera, it wouldn't have worked. I couldn't have pretended because my value system was that the food had to be real. Yeah. I had to cook with love. So before we began filming, and I told the whole crew that I want every dish to be real and I want to eat every dish. Um, and sometimes it's not possible in the world of filming. We have to eat two hours after we've made it. Yeah, yeah. Me, there was a massively positive, positive energy in, in the in the room. And that's because I said, can we please bless the room? And the crew looked at me and my producer looked at me and I said, <laughs> I have positive energy in the room, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, and they actually, being creative people, they took that on board because my cameraman said, well, you know why that's really really powerful, Parveen? I said, no, why is it so powerful, Rob? He said, the camera will pick up your energy. Yes. And I, I do think that was really evident. Yeah, I, I do. I think that was really evident. So let me ask you a question then. Um, what is most important to you? I know you've talked about love. The whole mm -hmm. idea behind the cookbook was following through with your mum's wishes as well, which was really important. So as one of your fans, when, when the book comes out to me, what do you want me to achieve from, from having your book and the learning? Is it the care? Is it the love and passion for Indian food? Tell me about your book. Oh, good question, Pyle. I mean, the book is, it took me five years to write and it wasn't an easy book to write. And then the first thing I had to do before publishing is write it in the past and talk about my mum used to do this. Sure. So I want, I for me, when, when I post the book out, I want people to cook the food and say the recipe worked. I want to strip away the images and the top tips and the love. At the end of the day, if I send somebody my book and they make a dal or a samosa or a chicken masala and it works, yeah. to me, I feel that I've, I'm, I feel vindicated. I think I've done it. I've taught somebody who couldn't cook Indian food to cook it. And that, actually, that is at the core of it. The recipes work. And if you watch people, chefs like Delia Smith, whom I used to watch, yeah, and they need to boil an egg. And I can I tell you something, Bile? I can't boil an egg. <laughs> oh, you can. I'm sure you can. I can't, <laughs> egg, I can't, boil, I can't fry them. I'm too impatient. My husband is an egg fryer in, in, in the family. I'm very impatient. So when she taught, taught the nation how to boil an egg, she got a lot of criticism about what she's doing, but she was teaching people how to really cook. Yeah. Yeah. So when somebody says, well, what do you love about the book? It really is, it works. The recipes work. And then is the beautiful photography and the, the funny stories about me and my children and my mum and then the collage of my parents yeah. and the top of how to eat at an Indian restaurant. And that's all padding at the core of it. The recipes work and that makes me feel I'm doing the right thing. And I think that's really important though, isn't it? And it's interesting that you brought Delia Smith up because... Yes, Delia Smith got a lot of stick about how to boil an egg, but actually what we're doing is going back to traditional values of teaching our children and the next generation how to cook, isn't it? And that's what I really liked about your book. It, you know, Indian food, I think to a lot of people can be quite complex, can't it? Because, oh, well, I don't know what spice goes with what and how do you know what, how much chili to put in maybe or how, you know, there's, there's so many spices and lots of people, but I think it was really good that it broke it down into really, I'm not going to say easy recipes, because I think no recipe is easy if you don't know what you're doing. But actually, if it breaks that myth down and knowing, actually, I could just imagine Pavi next to me. <laughs> yes, we just add this, we just add this. And there you have it, the beautiful curry. I know lots of my friends have bought your book and they've said exactly the same. And even some of their husbands have been cooking out of it because it's ignited a real passion and I think for me the best comments have been when I've looked at your social media that we're never going to make an Indian takeaway again because actually our food is better and you know igniting the cooking at home isn't it fantastic <laughs> I'm gonna yeah it's faulty for a lot of people um that is to me the best thing but again going back to when I wrote the recipe file and we talked about love and energy and positive vibes which are really important to me is that I wrote the very first recipe for my 18 year old son who went to university so again it came from a place of love as well as necessity it came from a place yeah. of love and the first spice kits I designed was for it were for Imran who went to university and he just 
couldn't get the balance right. He was a chemical engineer. He's what the common um, sense of a small chicken. You know, he doesn't have any common sense. So <laughs> when I wrote the recipes, I had to write them step by step. Right. And what I, did, I asked a lot of my friends, what do you look for in a cookbook? And when my best friend Jeannie has over, well, her husband thinks she's got 250. She's probably got 450 cookbooks. Wow. Um, and I asked her what her favourite cookbook was. And she said, she loves Nigella because Nigella speaks to you. It's like she's there in the kitchen with you. Yeah. So I sort of emulated Nigella's style because, I'm number one, I'm a fan and number two, we're both in our 50s, and I feel this. Obviously, if we met, we'd be best friends, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I, I think you would. I think I, you would, definitely. I, I admire her, but the, the best form of um, uh, best compliment is um, imitation. And I sort of imitated her recipes because she has a friendlier way of speaking. And that's, if you read my book, it's like I'm there with you cooking. Lovely. So, do you know, I, I, I had a question in my head while you were saying all of that. What does happy mean to you? Oh my god. Actually you 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 may have answered that though already, or have you? I don't know. Happiness. Yeah, happiness is an inner contentment, isn't it? And there's I think there's so many ingredients. Let me use the pen now. <laughs> nobody has a <laughs> nobody has a recipe for um contentment. There's so many ingredients required. And I think really for me as a mother, it is the health and happiness of my children give me a contentment inside. Once they're happy and healthy and the house is clean, then I can go forward and be the Spice Queen. But if any of my children, any of my cubs are hurting, as a lioness, all I want to do is link their wounds. Yeah. And I can't work. I try and compartmentalise. Is that comp I try to Yeah, compartmentalise, yeah. No. But it's difficult because I'm a very emotional person. So I, I run, even when in business, I get emotional. I get told off for being too emotional. We, have, we shot scenes in the show, and I said, oh, I'm not going to say that. And the producer said, well, we, need, we need you to describe this. And everything was from a place of emotion and authenticity right. and heart. Um, and I think that's what people saw when they saw me on camera, is that she's just being really real. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think there was a definite real. And it was it was nice even, you know, you had the uh, the shots of you going into, like, an Asian supermarket how many people have been inside an Asian supermarket? Not many, but it was brilliant because it was just bringing it back to basics into reality. Yes, and that's actually that's where you go to get your um, product products and spices. And you know, yes, the there's a 10 kg bag of rice that we buy. Um, but I think it's really important that when I read out the the list at the beginning of okay, author, columnist, uh, there was a TV chef businesswoman entrepreneur the one that you were most proud of is your family because that's, think, that's that's the center of it all isn't it that is the center of it all and it's like having grass having roots isn't it my mum always said you're you're if you're a tree you can you can grow bigger and stronger and branch out as far as wide as you can as long as the roots yeah. are strong and she yeah. always every year she insists my husband and I go away on a, on a holiday and then I said, Mom, you know, she's I'll come and babysit. And she said, you need to have strong roots. And she was, if your roots are grounded and you are a grounded woman and you are strong in your core and your roots, you can then flourish. And I really got it. But yeah. absolutely, because I have this home and a husband and children and who are all adults, I mean, 30, 28, 22 now. Um, wow. But they, are, they, are, they add value to my life. And when they're happy, I'm happy. And when I'm happy, then I can go forth into the world and I can be the Spice Queen and cook for whoever I want to cook for, Bobby Davro, Tony Hadley. You know, I met I met Lorraine Kelly. So all these people in the celebrity world are fantastic. And I'm just yeah. sitting there thinking, well, I just cook for a living and should I be here? But it's it's not what I cook, it's how I cook and how I teach. Yes. And it's you as well. Excuse me, yeah. It's me. You know, it's you as well and how warm you are and welcoming you are. I, I think it's wonderful. So... Dare I ask you what what's your favourite thing to cook? Gosh, depends what mood. If I'm in a rain, depends on the mood. If it's a rainy day outside and we want really stodge food and really comfort food, then I do make onion barges. And I'm not going to lie, I will have an onion barge butty with ketchup and have no guilt. I made it with James Martin and he loved it. And actually, a lot of people emulated the onion barge butty. Pure comfort food. If I'm in a meaty kind of mood, I'll go for a lamb shish kebab. And if in a moment sort of light and I've overindulged, I will have a light dal. So actually, 
just depends what mood I'm in to what I cook. But when I'm catering as a private chef and I've traveled around the country and the world, when I come in at three, four in the morning, do you know what I have to eat, Vile? Oh. You won't guess. I won't guess. Okay, you tell. Then if I won't guess, we could be here forever. <laughs> Ball of conflict. Bowl of conflicts. But is that but then that's because you've served everybody, you you've fed everybody, and does there come a point where you think, oh, I can't look yeah. at food? It's, it's just, too too much. <laughs> just too much. <laughs> yeah, I have too much food. Um, so you know, sometimes the simplest the simplest things in life are best. I find it really my friends find it really awkward to cook for me now. When I I keep saying to my friends, but you know what, I'm I've known you for years. But suddenly yeah. there's the pressure of cooking for me and went out for lunch to a really nice restaurant. And my friend said, oh, what should we have? Should we have halloumi burgers with um, potato fries and a jus and a this and a that? I said, do you know what I fancy? I fancy a cheese sandwich and a cup of coffee. <laughs> so for me, sometimes the simplest things in life, like a cheese and tomato sandwich with a nice hot cup of coffee and a bag of cheese and onion, there's nothing wrong with basic, simple food. No, I think so. And I think you're really right when you say it reflects how you feel. Uh, I'm quite similar that if I'm in a reflective mood, I'm actually quite happy to do a curry from scratch and be in there for a good two hours. Um, just have some music on in the background. And it's really relaxing as well, isn't it? And there are other days when you just think, no, I really can't be bothered today. Um, it's going to be something quick and easy. Always tasty, but... Mm -hmm. I think it's really important, like you say, it, it just feeds your mood. It does feed your mood, but it depends on your MO, or the kind of person you are. I mean, I never in a million years as a young woman or a child did I think I would cook for a living. I saw my mother feed a family of seven, a lot, like the Asian Waltons. Yeah. <laughs> but my mum never complained because she was a very passionate cook and she was a wonderful cook and everything mum cooked did taste amazing. Um, I know that because I, my friends would come for dinner and say, your mum's food is better than my mum's food. <laughs> um, I never wanted to be that Asian woman. who My value, I thought, I didn't value my culture. I didn't value any of my heritage. Um, but then as I grew up, again, in hindsight, losing both parents, I, you, you crave your own culture, you crave your heritage. And it's difficult to know where you're going if you don't know where you're from. And also with my children, it's passing on my family values to my children. And my children sometimes would say, Mum, you're a little bit obsessed with family meal times because I insist we eat together, the phones go off, we eat at the table. When there was three children, there was five of us, went from five to four, three to two. And when it was just my son and I, I would still insist on eating as a family. And my daughter now says, Mum, those are the best times we had around the dinner table chatting. But it's true, isn't it? Because we do, I mean, we do exactly the same where the phones are not on, no iPads, no phones, no nothing. Even we can hear them pinging away you don't go to them or you put them on silent. I think it's really important that you find that time just to connect, don't you? You have half an hour now, however long it takes for you to sit down together and you just talk, but you talk about your day. You talk about maybe things that are bothering you or things that have gone really, really well, which is always a good thing. Um, but I think it's really important having that connection, isn't it? It's it's really key. It is, but we, we've lost that in this fast pace. And if you read the forward of my book, in my introduction, I do say in this life of fast Wi-Fi and fast food and fast life, we've lost the art of just simply eating together. And even if you go to a restaurant, I've noticed when I've gone to restaurants is that people are still on their cell phones whilst eating together. And that's yeah. what I've been And, yeah, I may sound a little bit old-fashioned, but my family values are that we will sit and have a meal together. Yeah. And the other thing is not everybody loves cooking. Some people find it a chore. So for me to have a business, of what I love so when I'm stressed I'm in the kitchen cooking when I'm happy I'll cook when I work I cook so it's my mo it is the way I am sort of built now and it yeah. gives me complete joy so when I'm working and private chefing and I'm cooking 15 hours I don't feel as tired when I'm doing it afterwards I collapse on the sofa <laughs> <laughs> um, it's that love and passion and adrenaline that's make keeping you through because 15 hours is a long shift you and it's huge huge amount when you private chefing because i have to take all my products to my client's house and i cook at my client's house but it doesn't feel like work because it's one of my passions the difficulty for me is when i made my passion into my business but i write about it. so when i write a column i write about the passion for food in my column 
when I'm packing my spices, now I, we have, we've got my staff are furloughed, it's just myself and my husband, we pack with love. So everything around my business, my column, my book, my spice kits, uh, my demonstrations and my TV work is centered around the love of food. And it seems to fit, it just fits and clicks in. And it's, I've got, because it's so authentic, yeah. it doesn't yeah. feel like work. And I Googled the word, if you look at the word authentic in, a, in the thesaurus file, it says bona fide, genuine and true. Yes. So if I keep those values, if I'm bona fide, genuine, true to anything I present to you, then you're gonna believe it because it's true. Yeah. It is true, but it's also because I feel it from you. You know, it, you don't diversify from your values. I, I personally don't think how you are sort of now, even on screen, whether you're on a TV screen or whether we're chatting on the phone, it's the same, actually. It's that same love and warmth that we both share for each yeah, other. I, I think that's not. really... Well, well, we won't bring, we won't touch on that bit. Yeah, no, it's just the two of us. Um, and I think actually, on screen, I did try. There was a couple of jokes during filming, and I said, "Oh, can I leave yeah. them in?" No, uh, but in real life, I probably would like to leave them in. So when I do live TV, I'm doing a show uh, in a couple of days. I tend to add a bit more humour because I think that's important to have fun in the kitchen too. I think so, but it also gives uh, your fans an insight into you as a person. You have got a naughty side that sometimes yeah you can't always uh, share your naughty thoughts but <laughs> there are some things I think just a little bit of a teaser into your personality and, and how you are no I think it's really exciting so when you talk about there's a new show um you, sorry you're, you're doing it um a live tv show coming up but what what else have, have you got planned what where, where do we see Pavin the Spice Queen uh in the next six months a year Two years? Do we, do we, can, can you say, or is it all a bit top secret at the minute? It's all a bit top secret, but what I have now decided finally is to do things that fit in with my values, my principles. So if it feels right to me and I get a gut feeling, if it feels right, I'll do it. And if it doesn't feel right, I'll think about it. And I spent many, many, many years saying yes to everything. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. And now I have the freedom of choice. I think ITV gave me a huge platform. The show is now in Australia and Israel went to Sweden so all that's happened is I'm still in business I'm a woman in business that's how I see myself yeah. wife and yeah. but I have more choices and I can say yes I can say no to things and I was before I didn't have the option to say no because I was trying to build my business so now I do things that fit in with how I feel and I love the thing I love the most is live demonstrations when people come and watch me live and it's I get such an energy from the audience and it's like a little mini show and I just love it, love it. Well, I remember coming last year to the uh, the Great British Food uh, show, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, um, with my daughter. And we loved it. It was brilliant because actually there is a different energy on a stage as well. So what's your preference, do you think? Would it be being on a stage like that or in front of a TV camera? Well, now a lot of people now are using cameras for LinkedIn and Zoom calls and meetings. But if you are in front of an audience and you're a, um, a networker, you feel the energy of the audience and people can see you, you can emulate and bounce off each other. And actually, I think it's a comfortable place to be. With the camera, the camera will drain your energy and the camera won't give you anything back or smile at you. So you're using double the amount of energy and actually find that quite taxing. But yeah. I've got to the point now, by after doing it for 10 years, it's become second nature. So it used to be I was very conscious. Is it? I was consciously conscious of what I was doing. Then I was consciously, I was subconsciously conscious of what I was doing. Now I'm subconsciously subconscious of what I'm doing. So I can teach, talk, cook, talk to the presenter, talk to my producer, and get good food out all at the same time. And I find it um, I find it easy, and I find it natural, and I love it. I love what I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. No, exactly. But I think as well, it's come with time hasn't it so when we talk to you know and I'm sure you're the same people you know we talk to so many business leaders entrepreneurs and when you see business success it's not overnight because <laughs> people have worked and worked and worked oh. on their, their business their brand um they've tried to get this reputation and yes sometimes okay you have that lucky break but it's actually just equally as hard maintaining that, isn't it, then? It is. Nobody's an overnight. Well, people are, I'm sure. But, I mean, I've been in business for years, and I've been 
cooking and demonstrating and working with Shopping Channel, perfecting my art, and then I, I got the big break. But I've been doing it behind the scenes for years, over 12, 13 years. Yeah, no, it, I think it's fascinating. It's uh, It's been brilliant. Pavi, thank you so, so much. I can't believe half an hour has <laughs> just gone, just like that. <laughs> I think we could have spoken for a very long time. Thank you so much for being a guest on Business Matchmaker TV channel today. And uh, we look forward to hearing all about your shows and no doubt seeing you back on the TV. Absolutely. I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.